Hello friends, welcome to the channel Mechanics of Solids. Today in this section, we will see some problems from uni axial loading. We have two questions here. First we will solve the question number one. I will read you the question for you. There is a stepped bar. One end of the bar is fixed and the other end of the bar is free. The diameter of the first section of the bar is 15 mm. The diameter of second section of the bar is 30 mm. And the last section diameter is 20 mm. The length of the section 1 is 150 mm. The length of the section 2 is 200 mm. And the length of the section 3 is 250 mm. Axial loads are acting on these sections as shown in the figure. Here a load of 80 kN is acting outwards. Here a load of 330 kN is acting inwards. Here a load of 300 kN is acting in the right side direction. It is asked to find the maximum elongation occurred to this bar under the axial forces. Whether it is compression or tension. It is provided the Young's modulus for the material is 205 gigapascal. So we can solve this problem. How we will approach this problem? We can solve this problem using the principle of superposition. According to the principle of superposition, principle of superposition, the superposition principle states that the net effect produced by the net effect produced by all the forces acting on a body will be equal to the sum of the effects produced by each and every force individually on independent segments of the body. This is very clear. Here a force P1, P2, P3 are acting on this body. From P1 there will be an elongation delta L1. From P2 there will be an elongation delta L2. From P3 there will be an elongation delta L3. According to the principle of superposition, the net effect delta L will be equal to delta L1 plus delta L2 plus delta L3. Delta L is the elongation produced by the all forces. This is the principle of superposition. We already have the equation delta L is equal to PL divided by AE. From superposition principle, we can write delta L is equal to if Young's modulus E is constant for the material, we can write 1 by E into P1 L1 divided by A1 plus P2 L2 divided by A2 plus P3 L3 divided by A3. This is our equation for solving that problem. We can solve that problem. First of all, we can write the given data. So, L1 is given as 150 mm. D1 is given as 15 mm. As the area of cross section for the area cross section is circular, we can write a1 is equal to pi by 4 into d1 square that is equal to pi by 4 into 15 square. This is the area for the segment A, B. This is the segment B, C. This is the segment C, D. Likewise, L2 is equal to 200 mm. It is given D2 is given as 30 mm and therefore A2 is equal to pi by 4 into 30 square. Similarly, L3 given as 250 mm. There A2 is equal to pi by 4 into 20 square. Diameter is given as 20 mm. Now, from the superposition principle, we got this equation. All the values are known to us. E value is known, A value is known, L1 is known, A2 known, L2 is known, A3 is known, and L3 is known. Except P3, P3, P2, and P1. So we need to calculate P1, P2, and P3. 
Now, from the superposition principle, again, we can draw the free body diagrams for this stepped bar for getting each segment separately. I am trying to draw the free body diagram for the section CD. In the section CD, it is said that 80 kN load is acting outwards and it is tensile in nature. It is acting outwards, therefore it is tensile in nature. 80 kN is the resultant force acting on the section CD. So we can write 80 kN itself. Always you must start from the free end. So leave this 80 kN as it is because it is the free end and it is the resultant acting outwards. Now coming to the section BC. This is the section BC. Here a load of 330 kN is acting inwards. So what will be the net effect? Just add these two CD and BC. 80 kN to the right and 330 kN to the left. The net effect will be the net effect I will show you. This will be the net effect BC 80 minus 330. 80 minus 330 that is equal to minus 250. So the direction will be in the left direction. We can write 250 kilonewton is acting in the section BC. Now we can take the section AB. I am taking the section AB. In the section AB, it is said that a 300 kilonewton is acting outwards. Here 250 is acting in the left direction. So when we add this BC and AB, it is clear that in the section AB, a 50 kN force, 300 minus 250, 300 minus 250, that a 50 kN force will be acting on the section AB. So, now we have all the values for the loads acting on different segments. Now, I am going to write this separately, P1, now we have P1 is equal to 50 kN on segment 1. P2 is equal to, this is compression minus 250 kN. Now P3 is equal to, what, 80 kN on the last segment. Now we have all the loads here. It is asked to find out the deflection. For getting the deflection, we can make use of the equation formed by the superposition principle. And this is that equation. Substituting all the values here, we will get the answer 0 0.172 mm. One thing you must remember that E is given in 2 gigapascal, 205 gigapascal. 1 pascal is equal to 1 newton per meter square and the giga is 10 power 9. 205 into 10 power 9 newton per meter square. All other dimensions are in millimeter. So we are converting this meter into millimeter. Meter to millimeter is 10 power 3, 10 power 3 whole square, 10 power 6 coming to the numerator 205 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per mm square. This you must uh, keep in mind. Also, this thing, the deflection for the sec second section it is compressive in nature. So, our equation, once again I am telling you 1 by E into P1 L1 by A1 minus P2 L2 divided by A2 plus P3 L3 divided by A3. This will be our final equation. And now there may be a chance for asking a sub part for this question. They will ask if the deflection is zero. That, that means if the net deflection is zero, then what will be the length of the first section, second section or third section? If they are asking, if the deflection is zero, then what will be the length for the first section? Then we can change the equation accordingly. Zero is equal to, if the net deflection is zero, 1 by E, P1 into L divided by A1 minus P2 into L2 divided by A2 plus P3 into L3 divided by A3. Likewise, we can solve this uh, problem. 
if the net elongation is zero then the length of the segment AB should be this L value this L you will get from here this is how you solve this problem now we can go to question number two so question number two in the similar way we can solve question number two in question number two we can see that the left portion is free it is not fixed the left end is free so we can take the load we can uh, take the load from this direction or this direction that is not a problem anyway i am uh, going to take the law calculate the load from the right side or right segment in this question it is asked to find the load p here also section we have section a we have section b we have section bc and we have section cd one two three the diameter of the first section is 30 mm the diameter of the second section is 60 mm diameter of the third section is 40 mm so i can write here here we have for the section AB L1 is equal to 600 mm D1 is equal to 30 mm therefore A1 is equal to pi by 4 into D1 square if it is having a circular cross section you can take A1 is equal to pi by 4 D1 square similarly L2 is equal to 800 mm L uh, sorry D1 sorry D2 is equal to how much 60 mm therefore a2 is equal to pi by 4 into 60 square l3 we have 900 mm l3 is equal to 900 mm d3 is equal to 40 mm therefore a3 is equal to pi by 4 into 40 square. In the previous problem, as in the previous problem, we don't have the values for P1, P2 and P3. It is asked to find out the load P first. Here a commercial load P is acting. Here tensile load 70 kN is there. Here a tensile load of 40 kN is there. Now I am going to calculate the load P. For equilibrium, the left force should be equal to the right force. The leftward acting forces are 40 kN plus P kN in the left. That should be equal to the forces acting in the right direction 30 kN plus 70 kN. So what will be the value for P? P is equal to 30 plus 70, 100 minus 40, that is equal to 60 kN. We will get the value for P. Now we have the value for P. Now I am rubbing this P and writing 60 kN here. So first of all, we need to find out the unknown magnitude for the P. Okay, fine. Now let us see each segment separately, each load acting on each segments. I am trying to calculate the section. First I am drawing the section CD. See in section CD a force 70 kN is acting in the right direction. Leave this 70 kN as it is because it is the free end and whatever uh, force acting in the outward direction and the free end will be the resultant itself. So we can consider the 70 kN load is acting on the section CD. Now take the section BC. I am taking the section BC. In section BC a load of 60 kN is acting in the left direction. Now to get the resultant I am going to add this. To get the resultant in BC I am going to add section CD and BC. 70 in the right and 60 in the left that means 10 kN towards the right direction 10 kN ten side so I got here 10 kN ten side ok now I can take the last section in the last section it is said that how much about 40 kN 40 kN is acting outwards 
as I said this is the free end this is the free end right this is the free end so we can take whatever force acting outward will be the resultant so we can write the 40 kilo newton as it is or you can check like this it is given 30 kilo newton is acting here outwards from section a b from section a b 30 kilo newton is acting outwards you just add these two if this is a section bc and section ab you just add 30 plus 10 40 kilo newton outside this implies what in section ab in section ab a load of 40 kilo newton will be acting outwards so that's how we are taking the loads for each sections now i am writing writing p1 is equal to how much 40 on section AB, 40 kilo newton, 40 into 10 raised to 3 newton. In the previous problems, or problem also, in this problem also, you have to convert kilo newton to newton. Then only you will, you, you will be arriving the answer properly. P2 value is 10 kilo newton, 10 side, it is positive. 10 into 10 raised to 3 newton, P3 is equal to how much? 70. 70 into 10 power 3 newton. Now we have all the values P1, P2, P3, A1, A2, A3, L1, L2, L3 and E value E1 equal to E2 equal to E3 equal to E that is equal to 202 gigapascal. This 202 gigapascal E value you must change into Newton per mm square as I said before E is equal to 202 gigapascal 2 into 202 into 10 power 3 Newton per mm square. Now you will be getting the answer on solving this you will get 0 0.4303 mm. That is the answer for this question. Likewise you have to solve this. Okay, thank you.